Cloud Code is now available on the desktop. It's fast and easy to use and you will immediately like this workflow. But there's a glitch. I discovered this after building three projects back to back. I've spent the last few days testing it across different projects and have come to like the workflow. In this video, I'll show you what works, what breaks, and what you can do about it. I'll start by demonstrating how the user interface works and how you can integrate it into your daily coding. Then I'll go on to build a complete full stack app. The project will demonstrate the core features of Cloud Code Desktop. If you watch this video until the end, you will learn everything that you need to know about Cloud Code Desktop and how you can leverage it to code and build faster than you can imagine. But just in case you're new here, my name is Joe. I've taught more than 5,000 developers how to use Cloud Code through my blog, and I'm now here on YouTube sharing my knowledge and helping you learn every new feature of Cloud Code as it comes up. If you have not joined us yet, click that subscribe button so that you don't miss future Cloud Code updates, tutorials, and guides. I also have this Ultimate Limited Cloud Code Master Course, and you don't want to miss out. Check out the newsletter link in the description to claim your spot. Back to Cloud Code Desktop. First, you need to download and install Cloud Desktop app to access Cloud Code. It's part of Cloud Code Desktop app, and you can find it in the sidebar menu by clicking this icon. Cloud Code Desktop is tucked in this tab located in the side panel, and you can toggle between Cloud Code Desktop charts and Cloud Code. When you first click on the Code tab, you'll see this Welcome to Cloud Code screen where you'll get started with installing the runtime dependencies to start using Cloud Code on your desktop. Click the Install Dependencies button to begin setting up Cloud Code Desktop. User Interface When the installation is complete, you'll have Cloud Code Desktop user interface that has this prompt input at the center. At the top, we have this Select Folder option that selects the folder for your project. The next is the Environment Selection dropdown that is set to local by default. The models selection at the bottom has a list of models that include Cloud Sonnet 4.5, and these are the three starting prompts templates that will help you to quickly create starter prompts like creating the cloud.md file. We also have the notice at the bottom that warns you about the potential security risk when you're using Cloud Code with your file system. When starting, you can use the folder selection option to select the project of your folder this opens your file system and you can select a folder. Next, you can set up the environment to local, default, or you can add a custom environment or update an existing cloud environment by filling in the detail and setting up the right access rules. For new cloud environment, the settings are the same. After setting up the project folder and the local environment, you can now select the model to use in the dropdown. As I mentioned earlier, these are the three prompt templates that help you to create initial prompt quickly at the bottom. Let's begin by creating a cloud.md file as an example using one of these templates. We'll use our first prompt template, create cloud.md, so that you can see how the templates work. You just click on it and it's going to insert it in the prompt input box. Select the model, then send the prompt. You immediately see this warning pop up about permissions trying to access a workspace. You should click on Trust the Workspace and Confirm to continue. It immediately starts creating cloud.md file inside the folder you selected as the project folder. And at the bottom, you can see the button to open this on VS Code. When completed, you see the code inside the artifact and also you can see the summary of what you've created as it's already in your project folder. You can now open it in VS Code to view cloud.md file. And it's going to pop up this warning to notify you that it requires you to confirm the permissions just before you can proceed. The same happens in VS Code where it asks you the same about the permissions. So you simply click on continue. Inside you can see the sample cloud.md file that has been created and it's just a basic template that you can customize to fit your project needs. Next is searching your code base. Cloud Code Desktop has an efficient search function to search your code base. To help us understand how this works, I will introduce a to-do comment here to demonstrate the search functionality of Cloud Code Desktop. Then back to Cloud Code Interface, I will use the second prompt template to search my code base. Simply click on it and it will be inserted in the prompt box. Then select the model and send the prompt. It immediately starts searching your code base and it will ask you for permission 
then returns with a message that this is an empty directory with just a cloud.md file. And you can see it caught up my to-do command in a cloud.md file and it wants to remove it. You can clearly see that this is a useful function when you're searching your code base. And I'll just confirm remove this command from cloud.md file. After confirming, it has removed the to-do command and marked it as fixed and given me a message that this has been fixed. This is how you'd go about fixing all the pending issues in your large code base using the search and fix approach on Cloud Code Desktop. Now it's time for us to run a real test on Cloud Code Desktop. We'll be building a coding time tracker. This is my basic prompt. I want you to help me build a simple full stack web app. We call it AI Software Engineer Code Time Tracker. It should track my daily coding hours. Then we give it the tech stack backend. We can go with fast API. I like vanilla JS in the front end to make things easier. Since it's just a demo, we can just go with SQL Lite as our database option. The core requirements include a homepage with a start button, a stop button, a lifetime display. Then we've given it the backend endpoints where it's going to create these using Python fast API. Then we have this data model. We have the front end where we instructed to use the fetch API and the styling to be minimal, clean, modern, and to fully use vanilla JavaScript, no frameworks. Then we give it what we need. We need a main.py file where we have a backend with fast API. Then we have some extra notes at the bottom where we should avoid over engineering. This is a simple goal to just test how Cloud Code Desktop works. So I'll put this prompt inside my prompt input box, then select the folder for the project and just leave the environment to be local. And for the models, I want to build this using Cloud Sonate 4.5 and I simply click on send. Cloud immediately creates this to-do list that summarizes my project into seven actionable steps that include creating a fast API backend, creating a database initialization script, creating a HTML frontend, creating a CSS styling, creating JavaScript logic, and creating requirements.txt file, as well as documenting the project by creating a readme and setup instruction file. I want to open this on VS Code and make this to be side by side with Cloud Code since it helps me follow the process as Cloud Code is creating the files and writing the code. Cloud Code Desktop begins creating the backend and it starts with the main.py file, which is our backend logic. It carefully creates this code, then moves to the database initialization script. And you can see on the task list, it cancels out every task that has been completed. It moves to the front end and completes the index.html file, then works through the styles and moves to JavaScript logic where it writes the code for the timer and other functionalities that we need to make this app fully functional. After a few minutes, it finally writes the readme with all the instructions that we need to set up this app and get it working. This has been a fast and an impressive build with no problems. That's the quality of Cloud Code Desktop in building full stack apps within minutes and with no drama. Now let's move to the testing of this app. When I began testing, this is where I encountered my first problem with Cloud Code Desktop, as I mentioned at the start of the video. When I gave it the initial prompt to open the app in the live server and run from the terminal, Cloud Code Desktop froze for nearly three minutes. I quickly discovered that running this app is memory intensive and will at times freeze, and the only way out is to close the session and open it afresh. And always remember to ensure you exit completely from the minimized programs in the tray. I like to run it as admin to give the program full privileges and we can now get back to testing. After testing, I discovered the app works well and it opens the live preview. It was now time for us to use our last prompt template by asking Cloud Code to give us recommended test areas to improve. Although we've not written any tests on this project, running this prompt gives us detailed list of all possible tests that can be run to improve our project and make it ready for production. Check out this other video that is on a screen that will teach you more about Cloud Code beyond the basics. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, one like, one subscribe gives me one more step forward to bringing you great content. Thank you and I appreciate.